Okay, so first of all, if you haven't had a chance to watch part five of Farewell to Rexall Place, check it out. There's a link to it below. It brought back a lot of great memories. Anyway, back to the grim reality that we're currently facing. If you watched the Oilers-Ducks game the other night, you would have seen this. Gets left, kicks it. Puck's got to go all the way over the line. That doesn't get over the line. It wasn't even close. Now, just a few minutes earlier, Patrick Maroon received a penalty basically for just being stronger than Josh Manson. Now, I don't have to worry about being fined, so I'll just say it. The officiating in that game was horrendous. And in case you missed it, it was the game before in Los Angeles, too. There's no question. Lucic makes contact and the referees are coming across. Referees are coming across, going to the coach's challenge. Minute review has determined the call on the ice stands. We have a goal. And the game before that in San Jose. With the coach's challenge in effect this season, officials have more of an opportunity than ever to make the correct call. And they're still making the wrong ones. My problem with the offside call from the other night is that the linesman is guessing. He doesn't see the puck, and yet he blows the whistle, claiming that the puck crossed the blue line. I know he didn't see the puck because if he did, he would have noticed the puck wasn't even close to the blue line. Now, compare this official to the one here who also couldn't see the puck and blew the whistle and claimed the puck didn't cross the line and you have a gross level of inconsistency in the officiating. So when the game ended the other night, I was ticked right off. And I thought to myself, why am I so upset about this? I know that the officiating has been terrible league-wide for a few years now. This isn't some sort of conspiracy against the Oilers. So why am I now all of a sudden so frustrated with it this year? And then I figured it out. Light bulb. When you're getting blown out on a nightly basis, a missed call here or a called back goal there isn't a very big deal. But when you're tied or within a goal every game, the calls take on more meaning. And for the first time in five years, this is what the Oilers and the fan base are having to deal with because the Oilers are playing competitive hockey every night. And that brings me to the bottom line of this season and it's something I mentioned in my season preview. I'm far more concerned with the Oilers improving their play than the actual game results. In my opinion this season is just a stepping stone to the 2016-17 season. That is what this season is all about. That's what it's all about isn't it? That's what it's always been about. Now that doesn't mean that losing is acceptable. What it means is not competing your hardest every night is unacceptable. And I have said this repeatedly all year long. That is what is supposed to happen in the first year of a rebuild. It should have happened in Taylor Hall's rookie season, but it didn't. Players were let off the hook year after year. But you can't rewind time and go back and fix that. When you begin rebuilding, you need to establish that no matter who is in the lineup and no matter how the game is being called, and even if the games don't even really mean anything, you are going to compete. And that is what I have finally seen from the Oilers this season. People like Matt Larkin and Ryan Kennedy over at the Hockey News who have come out and trashed the Oilers recently clearly have not watched this team play very much this season. Despite losing a ton of close games and having several key injuries, the Oilers have established a level of work ethic and accountability, and they will absolutely take a step forward next season and make the playoffs. Write that down. So share this video if you agree with me, and I will see you for the final time this season next week.